This house was sent to me by a viewer. It's a really unusual building and I found it such a satisfying challenge to work with. I would love to keep making these videos of tiny abandoned renovations, so please do send me all of your ideas for small, derelict, unusual buildings and structures via my website at gemmawheeler.co. This house immediately caught my attention and I'm sure you can see why. It's such a striking shape and looks like something out of a fairy tale. The building was in fact a toll house and the octagonal wall formation enabled the toll collector to have views up and down the road to ensure any passers-by paid for using the road. The toll collector probably lived on the upper floor and in later times the whole building was used as a house but has now sadly fallen into a really bad state of repair. Unsurprisingly, the exterior is a listed building, meaning that the least contentious work you could do to it would be to restore it faithfully to its original state. And I think that would be a wonderful thing to see. However, I also think it would be best preserved if it could become a comfortable home with enough modern facilities to ensure that it doesn't fall into disrepair again. Through time, there have clearly been attempts to make this happen, and it seems that previous occupants have encountered exactly the same challenges as I have now encountered in trying to figure out how you fit modern facilities into a house of this size and shape. At some point, a small square room was added to the rear of the property, most likely to contain a scullery. This was later extended to add on a bathroom. The result is an awkward rectangular projection from the back of the building that does not complement the character of the original property in any way. The rectangular extension is not original to the building, so my goal would be to replace it with a new extension that sits comfortably with the original polygonal structure and enhances its form, while allowing for the introduction of a more spacious kitchen and a modern bathroom. So I started off working with the angles of the chamfered corners to see if I could create some continuity in their lines. The rectangular extension felt incongruous in the way it projects off in a straight line, so my instinct was to try and wrap the extension around a corner or end of the building to kind of nestle the two together while keeping the extension subservient to the main structure. I realized that if I just carried the roof lines on down to the ground, that would limit the floor plan layout to something too small to be useful, as well as making the room heights too low. So that led me to the understanding that this new portion needed to take on its own form that somehow echoes the original form. The most dominant feature of the original form is the chamfered corners. So when I played around in plan view, I found that I could echo those angles in a hexagonal rather than an octagonal form, and that could connect naturally to a rectangular projection that would act as a connecting element. In 3D, I needed to then delineate these three geometric forms so that they all work together visually, but are differentiated enough that they could be read separately. So the hexagonal extension has a roof pitch at the same angle as the main building to echo that, while the rectangular portion is effectively the same form as the element of the existing rear extension. As that part is probably older than the rest of the existing extension, there's a chance it would be protected still, so this would be a good way of being able to hold on to it but incorporate it into the new design. If you're enjoying learning about design from an industry professional, then I'd really recommend you trying out Skillshare, which is a whole platform of classes in anything from 3D modeling to creative writing taught directly by highly skilled professionals. It is a great place to dive directly into creative industries that interest you either as a hobby or as a potential career move. There are hundreds of career focused classes to help you upskill, design your ideal business or develop new ideas for diversifying your income. I've been using it to help me reframe my architectural practice for an online world because I find learning from professionals in different industries helps me think differently about my own. So this class by Nathaniel Drew on discovering, honing and sharing your voice online gave me loads of ideas about how to express myself in an online world. And then this one too by Ali Abdal about productivity for creators systems, organization and workflow has saved me so much time in figuring out how to juggle all my different career and life responsibilities so I can get on with doing the bits I love. Skillshare are offering a one month free subscription to the first 500 viewers to sign up. So please do move fast because this could be the first step in designing a career that you love. So let me now take you into the interior of the building. 
I couldn't find anything more than a basic floor plan for this building, but it's so small that there are only a handful of key features anyway. The first is this entrance door to the side, then the central chimney stack, and finally the tiny stair, which I know is located over here because of a previous planning application. The first and probably most controversial change I want to propose is to stop using this central doorway as an access point and instead use the new extension as the entrance. This might be allowed if the work can be reversed, which it could if the existing door is retained and the opening simply closed off. The reason I want to do that is to reduce the amount of circulation space in the main building and focus it over to the side where the stair is. This is so you don't have to cross the room on either floor when you want to go up or down the stairs. And it allows for the space between the chimney and the door to be used for a few different things. So this would become the main entrance to the building, set back from the road and between the main house and the large garden. You enter a door that's perpendicular to the road and you're immediately taken off at an angle down this route with a line of roof lights. There's a storage closet here and a WC and shower in this corner. Further in, you enter the kitchen and a dining space where you could have some glazed access to the garden and a terrace. There's enough space in this kitchen to house your dishwasher, oven and storage cupboards and you could create a utility cupboard from this too to include the washing machine. This portion of the kitchen forms the connection to the main building so I wanted to put another external door here so you can move through the length of this space inside. I'd anticipate the parking space being on this side of the building so it would be a useful access and escape point and a spot to take off your shoes while you sit on this bench. To try and get rid of this feeling of there being an add-on to the existing building, while I try to regain something of its original identity, I've included a full height window at the end of this line of sight. The aim is to remind you that the main building ends at this wall and you enter something else beyond that. So now we go into the main building and the room shapes are what really dominate what's possible here. Working with the stair makes this space quite challenging, but I think it's a natural point to put a living space at the heart of the whole configuration. Freestanding furniture would be so difficult to place without taking up too much floor space. So I've proposed the integrated seating area that tucks into the niche that was once the entrance point. There's a little space for decorative storage above here, and I think it'd be nice to reinstate the fireplace in this central chimney. Round to the other end of the building, you've got a decent amount of space for a bedroom, and I've used the other side of that closed off entrance area to put some recessed clothes storage. You can see that the existing staircase would have been pretty steep, which wasn't unusual for the time. And it takes you up to the first floor that feels more like a half story from the low head heights. Straight ahead to the end, I've put a second bedroom in the same configuration as the one below it. And in this space next to the stair, I've proposed quite a luxurious bathroom. 
I wanted to do this to explore what I think would make this building really desirable to a modern inhabitant, as having the only bathroom downstairs and out in the rear extension is never ideal. But to make this workable, I've proposed that a WC goes in this nook above the original entrance area, and there's a chance that installing the drainage for that would be seen as a step too far in creating works that are reversible for the listed building status. I've put a freestanding bath up here as I like how it feels a bit like your Alice in Wonderland with these low windows. And I've just put this wall and door here to demonstrate how I'd close this space off from the rest of the house. But if this was my home, I think I'd get rid of this wall and just have it as a family bathtub open to the house. Thank you so much for watching. Please do keep sharing my videos and getting in touch with more tiny houses you'd like to see me renovate.